Welcome back to another episode here at Laser Everything. And today we're going to be taking a look at a tool that's going to help make things a lot easier for people who are either jigging things up or working with a rotary. So let's get started. So as I said, this is all about making things easier. So a lot of the problems that we see that come in in regard to first use, ease of use on a machine getting set up, particularly with use of rotaries or jigging things up for repeatability, tends to be in regard to the way your workspace is set up. So we actually found a good way of resolving some of those issues by making a more consistent, easy to work with workspace. So we're gonna go ahead and do a quick unboxing. If you caught us on live stream for the podcast, you will have gotten a little sneak peek of this. So we're gonna be pulling that out of the box, getting it mounted up and showing you why it is that it can help. So let's get started. So as you can see here, this is my normal workspace. This is our good old Wisely 60 watt here that we reviewed a while back. And you'll notice this is a standard coin. This is 32 millimeters roughly. And you'll notice that this can clearly fit in between these holes. That's because these are 50 millimeters on center. So what that means is if you're working with coins that are smaller than, I don't know, 46 millimeters or so, you're gonna have a hard time jigging these up without using a fence like these over here. Or the alternative is a lot of people will use these bolts just sticking up out of the bed and they'll butt it up against these together. Now with a tighter pattern on your work bed, your breadboard, your workspace, people call it different things, they're all the same thing. With this tighter spacing, you can do that because you can fit these two bolts back here and perfectly lock it up and just bump it up and have consistent pins in your workspace to bump it up to. With this, obviously, again, this fits clearly through. And even if it was in all the way, you can see that it fits through even with the heads of these bolts. So we're gonna get rid of these and I'm going to give you a second reason why this might be helpful. So number two, when you're working with a rotary, my method of squaring things up is my rotary is now squared up to my bed. The whole point of that is if you look down from above, you get a good alignment directly from underneath the lens. Now the center of my lens is right around here so it perfectly lines up with my rotary here. The problem with that is that this isn't secure. So if I bump the rotary when I go to change out what's connected, or if I bump into the table while it's engraving, if I back into it with my chair, if I bump it from the side while I'm working on a different laser, if I get caught up in the wiring while I'm moving the exhaust around, anything like that, it makes it very easy to pull this out of alignment and now whatever is being lasered is now a waste piece and it becomes a test piece for a future problem, right? So that's problem number two. Now, if I bring this up onto the laser bed, I can't really line it up. In light burn, you get the opportunity to go off axis a bit from the lens and you can work around that. But with EasyCAD, you don't really get that usability. So for a lot of people who A, don't want or can't switch to light burn, this is a secondary problem. Another problem is some people have horrid alignment with the holes on their bed and they simply can't even get it into the ballpark, especially if they're working with a very small lens. So that's gonna be problem number two that we're working to overcome. Around here, we like to find resolutions. So again, insert this tool that we talked to silent manufacturing about. And when we talked to them, they were more than happy to send it over for us to take a look so that we could test it together and have a discussion about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out here and we'll do a little unboxing and assembly. So here in this box, we have this beautiful plate, beautiful milled aluminum. We have a wonderful sticker from Silent Manufacturing, made in the USA. And we have these two bolts, these little, I guess they would be button head bolts. Now, the use case for those is that you'll notice there's these two indents here on the lower left and the top right. And that gives you the ability to square this up to your bed and you can shift it around to help kind of square it up to your laser. So that way when you're jigging 
or fixturing things into the plate. It allows you to make sure that everything is squared up properly to where your lens is projecting downward. Another thing you'll notice is on this side, this protrudes out beyond where the bed normally would. Now, this is intended for your rotary to be bolted down to. And one last thing I wanna point out is there's all numbers. Lettering, for one, so it gives you the ability to give every column or row a label. So if, for instance, you work with a particular product and you have it set up in software where you don't wanna shift things around a whole lot, you have the ability to assign it a grid position, kind of like Battleship, right? So you have numbers, you have rows, measurements, and letters here. So you can pick what's most convenient to work with there. So a column number, a row letter, and you're able to save that design in software and know exactly where it's gonna open up to next time. And when you open it up, you know which pins to drop it into. You can leave yourself a note or have a list, a little notebook, and you're good to go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed and we're gonna close this up with some thoughts. Now, in case you were wondering, these little, I, again, I believe these are called button head bolts. Needs an M4 Allen key here, or M4 hex wrench rather. So we're gonna just keep this loose enough so I can shift it around still. And you just get these started. Now the idea is you can keep these loose and you'll notice from the edge here, you can kind of cock it one side or the other it gives you several millimeters of movement in either direction, maybe a little over a quarter inch of play sliding back and forth and also rotationally. And what that's gonna allow you to do, again, you can project a square down and you can square up to where you are because obviously the tower being bolted down and then the laser path being bolted down, it allows a, a couple degrees of movement of rotation this direction so that it may not be true to the plate or to the work bed. So this allows you another opportunity to square it up rotationally in this plane and work from that. Now, the next thing, going back to the rotary here, this gives you much more of an ability to keep things lined up. You can move it forward and aft if you're working with bigger or smaller things. You can work left and right to get in and out of your workspace a little bit more in terms of depth if you're working with longer items in your rotary. And you can shift front to back depending on what you're working with. So I'm already noticing that this is so much more to work with already and it looks like it lines up with your standard rotary bases here. So that's fantastic. At least chuck rotaries appear to line up perfectly here on the side. And what you need to do at that point is just pick the holes you need, the depth you need and lock it down. So you would just use your typical M5 bolts here and screw it in. I already see this being a game changer for a lot of people. Just in the last three months, I've had people come up and ask about ways to bolt down the rotary. Now I'm kind of in a privileged position here where I have a little bit of extra table here to the left of my normal work bed. So if it really came down to it, I could send a couple wood screws down to bolt this down so it couldn't move. But that's also not terribly convenient. It becomes a stationary object at that point because if you do that, you end up ruining your workbench over time. Just as an example as well here. So if I wanna jig up a coin or get a fixture kind of setup going, I can screw in two of these little screws. It would probably be better if I used some of my shorter ones, but this is what I had easily accessible. And what this allows me to do is if I have this coin, this is one of the ones I was 3D engraving earlier. It allows me to have a set point to fixture the coin to, so that if I need to flip sides, for example, and do the other side, I can just push it right up against these two and it will center itself up into that area. If I want to do, run another coin, I can do that. It allows me the ability to fixture smaller items than what I used to be able to in that 50 millimeter spaced bed. From what I've seen, the bigger 50 millimeter spacing bed that's under this, many laser manufacturers get them. And sometimes it's just a matter of what's available on the market from their suppliers. Sometimes they can't get the 25 or smaller spaced fixture plates. So this is a great cost saving alternative rather than replacing this whole mounting bed below your laser to also just fit this up to your laser. Then you don't have to worry about ripping the tower off and remounting everything. 
and the ability to square this to the output of your lens also gives kind of another added benefit there so that you don't have to worry about things being cockeyed or skewed a couple of degrees. So I can definitely see the value of this and we'll throw a little price tag up here for what it costs. And I think it's totally worth it. For the cost of the laser and the cost of the tools that you use on the laser, I think this can easily save you a ton of time. It can certainly save you that in materials if you are intermittently bumping and ruining projects that are being engraved. So I don't foresee anything that would cause me to not want to purchase this for that price. So again, thanks to Silent Manufacturing for sending this over. I'll be sticking the sticker somewhere. So you'll probably get one of those too if you order one of these. They also have a fixture plate that's just a square with really nice tight holes. And they also have one that's designed for just rotary. So you can bolt your rotary down to that and it extends off to the side and it's designed to bolt down into the bed so you can remove it and put it back every time you want. So there's some options there if this particular style plate doesn't work for you. And there's actually some different fixtures going up in the marketplace now from another manufacturer, Blackwell Engineering. So there's some competition in the space. I haven't checked out Blackwell Engineering's, but I can tell you at the very least, having my hands on this, I'm pretty happy with it. I know there have been some people purchasing or checking out the Blackwell Engineering stuff too. So hopefully we'll get some reviews out for that soon. So again, thanks to Silent Manufacturing for sending this over. He does have a store on the marketplace. So if you wanna check it out, check it out there. He also has his website. There are other jigs and fixtures that he sells. So if this style in particular doesn't work for you, check it out. And if just this type of fixture or this cost doesn't work for you, there are other options that people are coming up with that are a little bit more achievable. They may not be made out of metal, but there are some options out there to dig into. All right, guys, well, we took a look here at the silent manufacturing fixture plate. Thanks again to him for sending that over for us to check out after we discussed some of the problems and he had that as a potential solution for us to check out. So passing that information along to you guys, I hope it helps out. And if you do have any questions, if you have any problems that you're looking to solve, leave them in the comments below. We'll see what we can do to help find a solution for any problems you're having or answer any questions we might be able to. There's links into the description for our communities, Facebook, Discord, the Laser Master Academy. Big thanks to the Laser Master Academy members who are supporting our content and what we do in the community. It allows us to do all of what we do for the community. Uh, it allows us to spend all of our time doing this for you. So consider that if you're able and if you want to see more content from us in the future, hit that subscribe button, maybe the like button if it helped out, and we'll see you in the next one.